Okay, so we're going to learn how to solve exponential equations and inequalities. And the uh, main thing that we're going to be doing is taking two exponential expressions that do not have the same base and rewriting them so that they do have the same base. So for example, in this first problem, we have 2 to the power of x equals 8 cubed. And these two equations obviously do not have the same base. Or these two expressions rather do not have the same base this first one this first expression has a base of 2 and this second equation right here has a base of 8 now my goal is to make these two uh, expressions have a base that is the same and the reason i would like them to be the same is because if i end up with something that looks like let's say 2 to the x power equals for example 2 to the third power then i know what the value of x is if the bases are the same then the exponents must also be the same 2 to the x power equals 2 to the third means x must be 3 in order for these two sides of the equation to be equal so my goal is to rewrite so that either both sides have a base of 2 or both sides have a base of 8. Now, rewriting something with a base of 2 so that it has a base of 8 is not nearly as easy as rewriting 8 so that it has a base of 2. So I'm going to leave the left side as 2 to the power of x. And on the right side, I'm going to rewrite 8 as something that has a base of 2. And the reason this is pretty simple is because I, like a good mathematician have memorized my cubes up to 10 as i have suggested before and so i know that 8 is the equivalent of 2 cubed 2 to the third power is the same thing as 8. now this was 8 cubed so it's 2 to the third power cubed that is the same thing as 8 cubed i replaced the 8 with 2 cubed and the original problem was 8 cubed so once I change the base to a 2 I end up with 2 cubed cubed so recall that the way that we handle something that has uh, an exponent raised to another exponent or a double exponent like this is that we multiply the exponents together uh, 3 times 3 of course is equal to 9 and so my next step is going to be 2 to the power of x equals 2 to the power of 9. And now that both of these bases are the same, both of these have a base of 2, I know that the exponents must be equal, therefore x equals 9. And x equals 9 is the solution to uh, this equation. 2 to the power of 9 equals 8 to the power of 3. And I can check this on my calculator by doing 2 raised to the power of 9. 2 to the power of 9 is 512. And 8 raised to the power of 3 is also 512. So I can verify that I have done it correctly and that both sides of the equation are equal. Okay, let's try another one. Let's try this one. So the uh, first side, the left side, has a base of 9. And the right side has a base of 3. And so I want to rewrite this equation so that they both have the same base. And it turns out that rewriting the 9 to have a base of 3 is pretty simple because 9 is equivalent to 3 squared. So over here I can write the 9 as 3 squared. And it was 9 to the 2x minus 1 power, so it'll be 3 squared to the 2x minus 1 power. The left side already had a base of 3, so I don't need to make any changes there. And so that's what it'll look like. Um, 2 to the, uh, sorry, 2 to the 2x minus 1 power over on the left and 6x on the right. So just like on the last one, the way that we have an exponent raised to another exponent put together is through multiplication. 
So we will do 2 multiplied by 2x minus 1. I need the parentheses here because I want to make sure that the 2 gets multiplied by both the 2x and the minus 1. So 2 multiplied by 2x is 4x. And 2 multiplied by minus 1 is minus 2. So after this simplification is done, I'm going to have on the left side of the equal sign 3 to the 4x minus 2 power. And on the right side, I'm going to have 3 to the 6x power. So both sides of the equation now have the same base. They both have a base of 3. And that means that my exponents must be equal to one another. This exponent, 4x minus 2, must be equal to this exponent, 6x. Well, let's figure out what x will be then. If 4x minus 2 is equal to 6x, what is the value of x? So this is a two-step algebra problem. We'll subtract 4x on both sides of this equation. Okay, so we'll have negative 2 equals 2x. And then we'll divide both sides by 2. And we learn that our value of x is going to be negative 1. Like so. So in this next problem, we're going to actually write and solve an exponential equation ourselves. So uh, this says Kristen starts an experiment with 7,500 bacteria cells. And after four hours, there are 23,000 cells. And we're going to write an exponential function that can uh, model the number of bacteria after X hours if the number of bacteria change at the same rate. So we've done problems uh, similar to this where we had to write an equation that gave us um, the starting amount that she had, which in this case is the uh, 7,500. So this is the starting amount. Um, but the difference is that in previous problems, we were told the rate of change of the bacteria. We were told, you know, it doubles every hour, it triples every hour, something like that. We aren't told that this time. Instead, what we're told is that after four hours, which this, of course, is going to be our uh, x variable, just like it was the last time we did this. Our x variable is going to be 4. Our, our value of the exponential function is 23,000. So what this is going to look like is we start with our 7,500 and we multiply it by, now this would be whatever the, the rate of change is, and that's the thing we don't know. So we're going to call this a. I have no idea what the rate of change is, but I know that it does change for four hours. And at the end of four hours, we have a total of 23,000 cells. So in order for me to write an exponential function, um, I know that the function is going to look like y equals 7,500 times something to the x power and that something is going to be the rate at which the bacteria multiply and i need to figure out what that something is that's the a in my original equation so let's go ahead and solve this i'm going to divide both sides of this equation by 7500 And so I'm going to end up with a to the fourth power equals whatever 23,000 divided by 7,500 is. So 23,000 divided by 7,500. And I'm going to end up with 3.066666. Let's call it 3.066. Do the line over the top there like that. And so if I have a to the fourth and I just want a, the way that I isolate that is by doing the fourth root of both sides. So I want to do the fourth root of that number. So my calculator here, if I um, press the math button and I go down to this uh, option right here that says x and a root, x root will let me put uh, whatever number I want in for the index. So I want to do the fourth root. 
and I want to do the fourth root of that 3.066666. So I'm going to press second negative, and second negative says plug in the thing that you just got for your last answer. So the fourth root of 3.066 repeating is 1.3233. Let's just go ahead and call that 1.32. So A is 1.32. So what this tells me is the rate at which the bacteria multiply. This means the bacteria multiply one point three two times per hour. And that is the number that I was missing for my equation here, 1.32 to the power of x. So here is our equation. y equals 7,500 times 1.32 to the power of x. There's our exponential equation. Now the question that we're going to answer with that exponential equation is, how many bacteria cells can we expect in the sample after 12 hours. So we're going to take that equation that we just came up with, y equals 7,500 times 1.32 to the power of x, and now we're going to replace that x with 12. Okay, so we've got y equals 7,500 times 1.32 to the power of 12. So let's figure out what that is. 7,500 times 1.32 raised to the power of 12. And it looks like it's about 200, almost 210,000. So the math tells me it is 209,869.0699. So I'm going to say I expect about 209,869 bacteria. I'm going to cut off the decimal there because you can't have part of a bacteria. I'm just going to do the nearest whole number. And there we go. I expect about 209,869 bacteria after uh, 12 hours. One of the uses of these functions that you've probably seen before is the function for compound interest. The, the formula itself is this uh, A equals P times the quantity one plus R over N raised to the NT power. It looks very scary, but really we're just gonna be plugging numbers in and then using the calculator to get our answer here. So let's take a look at the formula first. This um, P value is the principal that you invest, meaning the amount of money that you put into the account and uh, this A right here is going to be the amount you have uh, after interest, including your principal. So this is the money you put in plus the interest. This R right here is your interest rate. T is the time in years. And then n is in two spots in this equation, and n is the number of times that we compound your money every year. So do we calculate your interest every month? Do we calculate your interest every six months? Do we do it twice a year, once a year? How many times per year do we calculate your interest? Okay. So let's look at the problem. It says an investment account pays 4.2% annual interest compounded monthly. Well, let's stop right there. That gives us a couple of pieces of information. 4.2% interest, the interest rate was our R. So R is 4.2%, which since I'm going to put this in the calculator, 
I'm going to convert that into a decimal, 0 0.042, since our calculator doesn't have a percent key. And then it says that it's compounded monthly. Compounded monthly means n is going to be 12. In a year, it is compounded 12 times because there are 12 months in a year. Okay, next sentence says, if $2,500 is invested in this account, what will be the balance after 15 years? So this gives us another couple of pieces of information. It says $2,500 is invested. That's our principal. So this means P equals 2,500. And then it tells us uh, how many times or how long we are leaving the money in. It says for 15 years. So T is going to equal 15. Okay, so now we know everything that we need for this formula to figure out A, the amount after the interest or the balance. So A equals, and let's plug in our numbers. So first we start off with P, our principal, which was $2,500. We're going to do parentheses, and in the parentheses, 1 plus, and we're going to do rate over number of times it's compounded. The rate was 0. 0 0.042 and it was compounded 12 times per year and then the power that we're raising that to is n multiplied by t or 12 multiplied by 15. Now this looks pretty nasty uh, but this can be put into the calculator really it can be put in the calculator all at once if you're brave so let's do 2500 we'll open up parentheses one plus, and then let's do our fraction. Um, so alpha y equals, and we'll select n over d for numerator over denominator, 0 0.042 on the top, and on the bottom, 12. Okay, we'll close our parentheses. And then our exponent is going to be 12 times 15. So we can put this whole thing into the calculator all at once and it'll give us the, uh, the balance after investing for 15 years, and we get $4,688, and let's call that 87 cents. So the number that the math gives us has uh, quite a few numbers after the decimal point that we aren't really gonna need. We can say after 15 years, I expect to have, and then now we'll round to the nearest cent, $4,688.87. Just like that. That's compound interest. Okay, and then the last kind of problem that we're going to be dealing with today is a compound inequality. Uh, or sorry, an exponential inequality. And that is um, a problem where you've got uh, a less than or greater than sign instead of an equal sign. So this is 16 to the 2x minus 3 power is less than 8. Just like with an equation, uh, our goal is to make these have the same base. So what is a base that 16 and 8 both have in common? Um, and the answer is 2. 2 to the third power is 8, and 2 to the fourth power is 16. Uh, and so 2 is the only base that will work for both 8 and 16. So on the left side, I'm going to rewrite the 16 as 2 to the fourth power. And that was 16 to the 2x minus 3. And it's going to be less than 8. 8 we're going to replace with 2 to the third power. So here's what my uh, inequality looks like after I rewrite the 16 and the 8 so that they both have the same base. Now, just like before with our equations, the way that I can put two exponents together is by multiplication. So 4 multiplied by 2x is going to give me 8x, 
and 4 multiplied by negative 3 is going to give me negative 12. And so what I end up with is 2 to the 8x minus 12 power is less than 2 to the third power. Now if this was an equation, what I would say is that the 8x minus 12 must be equal to 3. But this is an inequality where the left side is lower than the right side, so instead of saying they're equal, I'm going to say the 8x minus 12 must be less than 3. It must be less than 3. So I'm going to add 12 to both sides. That will give me 8x is less than 15, and then I'll divide both sides by 8. And I'll end up with x is less than 15 eighths. 15 eighths is a great answer. Uh, you could turn that into a decimal if you wanted to, but 15 eighths is, is completely fine. And so the value of this is 15 eighths, meaning if I substituted 15 eighths for x, 2 to the 8 times 15 eighths minus 12 is going to be lower than 2 to the third power. And in fact, if I replace the x with anything lower than 15 eighths, it's going to be less than 2 to the third power or less than 8. And so that's how we do um, um, exponential inequality. It's exactly the same as an exponential equation. Uh, the only difference is that at the end we have a less than or greater than sign instead of an equal sign.